UFOs, unidentified flying objects. Scientists, researchers, even military personnel and astronauts have been discussing them for years. Some people swear they've seen, photographed and filmed them. But all too often, the documents remain secret. In recent months, however, some major governments have begun to make part of their files on the unidentified flying objects public. France began declassification in March 2007, followed by Great Britain in May 2007 and Ecuador in May 2008. In the same period, the Vatican gave its opinion on the matter. Padre José Gabriel Funes released a significant and surprising statement. A belief in the existence of extraterrestrials does not go against the Catholic faith. Of the secret documents that are now accessible to the wider public, the Ecuadorian material is perhaps the most significant and the most fascinating. And soon other Latin American countries may take the same step. The extraordinary change in the Ecuadorian government's stance on UFOs is due above all to the work of investigative journalist Jaime Rodriguez. Thanks to his tireless research and his programs broadcast from the Ecuadorian TV channel Equavisa. His achievement, made together with the head of state Rafael Correa, is just the latest step in a long journey. It took me 22 years, from 1983 to 2005, to try to explain to the military that the UFO phenomenon should go from speculative to official. That is, if government authorities give their opinions on many issues, such as volcanic eruptions, climate problems and agriculture, why couldn't there be representatives of the government who discuss this issue, which is so vital to us? Things being as they are, when Colonel Lucio Gutierrez stood for the presidency of the Republic, we managed to besiege him, so to speak, with the support of the media. And that's how he offered to make a commitment, saying to me, Mr. Rodriguez, don't worry, because my government will be completely different. When he became president a second time, we reminded him of the promise he had made and he confirmed his commitment. He sent us to his personal secretary, Oscar Ayerve, in Guayaquil, and we brought him an informational file on the issue and the reasons why the Ministry of Defence ought to give it special attention. And so on April the 5th, 2005, the CIFO, or the Ecuadorian Committee for the Investigation of the UFO Phenomenon, was created under the presidency of Colonel Lucio Gutierrez. Once the committee was created, the military began to work with civilians on a convincing report aimed at persuading the government to break the seal of secrecy on the UFO documents. But there were major problems from the start. The first problem was the funds that were promised but then not granted. The civilian researchers thus decided to find their own funding. There were six civilians involved, although officially there were three of us. The other three worked with us, and thus in total we had a team of six. The six of us collected the money and we spent $12,000 in two years before we got the dossier. The second obstacle was the fact that military personnel were afraid of ruining their career by making official statements, since the UFO phenomenon was not taken seriously. The president had to intervene to resolve the dilemma. Thus we succeeded in obtaining authorization from the then Minister of Defense, Lorena Escudero, which stated as follows. All military personnel may make statements with absolute freedom, and this issue will not lead to the addition of any detail on their CV that might damage their reputation. In this way, we managed to overcome the second obstacle, which was very important. 
The third problem that Rodriguez and his colleagues had to overcome was also the most difficult. It directly involved the U.S. Secret Services, who offered military personnel significant economic and career-related incentives, provided that they respected a series of obligations. Amongst these, they required that information and documents regarding UFOs should be concealed. In the meantime, Rafael Correa had been elected president of Ecuador. In March 2008, a diplomatic crisis with Colombia led Correa to discover that his secret services had been corrupted. Y logran descubrir que había un financiamiento. He discovered that U.S. intelligence had secretly financed the Ecuadorian military secret services. So Correa took action. He dismissed the entire military structure directing the military secret services, and through the U.S. Embassy, he ordered the expulsion of all the CIA officers and all those who were involved in secret work in Ecuador. This frightened the military personnel enough that they ceased to conceal information. The following week, the president called a meeting in Cosena, the National Security Council. The meeting included the Air Force commander, the Army commander, the commander of the armed forces, the head of the Joint Command, and the Minister of Defense. He invited us to this meeting, and in front of us he said, the commanders of the Air Force, Army and Armed Forces must completely deregulate information on the UFO phenomenon. We don't want anything about this issue to remain secret in our country. The documents say that Jaime Rodriguez is authorized to enter any military structure in the country to conduct investigations and gather testimony on any case concerning the UFO phenomenon. Thanks to this authorization, over 400 deregulated UFO videos are now available to researchers in Ecuador. Most of them were recorded by civilians. In fact, before President Rafael Correa took a new sensational stance on the subject, the military confiscated all such videos. The material was regularly classified, and the public was denied access to it. The statement made by the Chief of Air Staff, Colonel Zanoni Garcia Dominguez, confirms the reason behind this situation. Once we have obtained the analyses and information, we'll be able to transmit all these documents officially. These are the first films of unidentified flying objects to be declassified by the Ecuadorian government. While celebrating a birthday party at the home of the former Vice President of the Republic, Luis Parodi, guests notice an anomalous object hovering in the sky. The video was recorded in 1992. In the images, we can clearly see the mysterious craft's orange-colored glow and its tubular shape. This video, also recorded in the 1990s, shows an amazing glowing platform hovering in the skies over Quito. The video was recorded by Francisco Navas and his sister from the terrace of their home. The videos may be the most fascinating part of the UFO material, 
But the direct testimony made by military personnel is of even greater importance. 44 statements by military personnel were released to the CEIFO. Today, they're part of the public domain on the internet and YouTube. These personnel are still in the military. They have experienced the events described in person whilst in service. There can be no doubt as to the veracity of these statements. While we were executing a flight maneuver during an instrumental exercise at the base in Malta, we saw a light moving towards the Cruthita sector, near the city of Cruthita. We notified the control tower that unknown traffic was approaching. So when we got closer, at about 2,000 or 3,000 feet, we veered left to get a better look at the lights we had in front of us. Right then, the two lights moved into formation with incredible speed and flew off toward the Cruthita Mountains, near the city of Cruthita. We flew over the sector, but we were unable to locate them. We had begun our descent from 11,000 feet, and I reckon that we had descended by about 2,000 feet, when I saw a very bright light, more or less around, uh, how can I put it, at a position of about 5 o'clock, a bit lower. I was in the back cockpit of the aeroplane, and Major Enriquez was in the front cockpit. I pointed it out to him, and he saw it. Immediately afterward, I called the control tower to verify whether there was an airplane, to which the tower responded that there was no traffic. We thought it was an airplane, but in the moment we veered toward this bright light, we saw that the object turned toward us and divided into two very intense lights on a collision course with us. So the pilot in the front cockpit, the Major, executed a manoeuvre to the left, and while we were turning, we continued to watch what the object was doing, and we saw that it stopped in mid-air and moved down toward the mountains. We tried to fly over a small mountain, and the object crossed us on this side, and while we tried to cross it from the other side, it disappeared without a trace. We scanned the area, but there was no trace of it. We thought it was an airplane, but the movements this light made were very fast, very erratic. An airplane can't do that. For example, turn and stop in mid-air and descend, descend diagonally. No airplane can do that. The instruments we have enable us to identify the objects moving in airspace clearly. We can clearly distinguish a commercial airplane from a military airplane or from extraneous objects. We have a lot of confidence in the capability of these instruments. Therefore, the information we have available, not just our information, but also that coming from abroad, in particular from the United States, which is a very qualified source of information, makes me confident that we are dealing with an area in which there are unidentified flying objects. In real terms, these are extraterrestrial objects, and I'm sure of it. We share the universe with other beings. Statements of such significance had never before been made publicly by military officials in active service, and they show the level of importance of the order that President Correa had given to the commanders of the armed forces on June the 25th, 2007, with official document number 2007-0439-CSN. These events, combined with Jaime Rodriguez's role as a television journalist, began to change civilian society's attitude towards the UFO phenomenon in Ecuador. We've noticed that there's a greater sense of maturity among us now. The population has a more mature attitude towards the UFO phenomenon. This stimulates us to move our work into the analytical part of the subject, which is what we really need to focus on now. Initially, civilians seem to be afraid to call me and say, I've recorded a video. 
Now they do, and with new vigor. People are participating much more now. I get a lot of emails stating, I've taken this photo, I've recorded this video. That is, we've noted an increase in cooperation on the part of the civilian community regarding testimony and evidence. This is the sense of maturity I'm talking about. So the sensationalist press, which has often used this subject to sell magazines or other things, has suddenly gone quiet, completely. This change began to yield its first fruits. The example that Rodriguez describes is emblematic. I'd had a lot of problems with the airport's radar director. He was always annoyed with me because he didn't believe in UFOs. So this gentleman saw that I was leaving and he called me. Hey, Jaime Rodriguez, come here. And he said to me, seeing as you're interested in these things, have a look at this photo. It was taken here yesterday at about 6 p.m. And he gave me this photo. This is evidence. It was taken by the radar director at Guayaquil Airport. Even some young people from a famous Ecuadorian music group called Los Chaucha Kings contacted me. Their drummer, Diego Mino, had taken a photo of it. The same object, photographed by two or three people at the same hour, on the same day, is even stronger evidence for us. It's a substantial change in behavior for those who had denied and opposed the matter before. Just think, now they're contributing, they're providing evidence. This is a real change in attitude, caused by this, how can I put it, this openness in deregulating the information on UFOs in Ecuador. The photo shows a clearly disc-shaped object above the Guayaquil City Airport buildings. We can easily make out the UFO's hexagonal structure. For a number of years, unidentified flying objects have often been detected near erupting volcanoes, or those that are about to become active. We have a volcanic chain, part of which is active, and the other part returning to activity. Tungurahua attracts media interest with TV stations placing their cameras there to film the volcano each time it erupts. And they show these objects twirling in the sky. TV stations get involved in this phenomenon filming the UFOs flying around the volcanoes. During an eruption of the volcano Tungurahua, the main national channel in Ecuador, Tele Amazonas, films the extraordinary spectacle. Suddenly, a glowing object appears above the volcanic crater and then disappears after just a few seconds. At one point, a mysterious glowing craft reappears. Cameramen Marco Ramirez and Julio Avilan capture the incredible scene on film. The object is moving. The video cameras are set on tripods. Shortly afterwards, flashes of light similar to lightning begin to appear. When slowing down the images, we can clearly distinguish these flashes of light. They seem to come out of light spheres. Then, a series of even larger and brighter flashes appears at the mouth of the volcano. In the still, one of the flashes seems to come from two side-by-side -side sources, while other smaller flashes appear above them. Here, we can see three light spheres, and only one of them emits a flash. Later telemetric analyses conducted in the United States have revealed that the object inside the crater had to have been at least 30 meters in diameter. But what sort of technology enables a flying object to stop at the mouth of an erupting volcano? The incredible object we're seeing in this video was filmed by an Ecuadorian government official. Once again, the video was recorded near Ecuador's volcanic chain. Look at that! What a fantastic! 
¡Qué belleza! Es como una araña. ¡Qué belleza! Se me perdió, se me perdió. Ahí arriba, ahí arriba. Miren eso. Es una nave preciosa. Es una cosa fantástica. Sí, parece, es como una... Tiene luces hacia los lados y un, un eje central. Se mueve muy lentamente. Se mueve súper lento, pero... Parece que está parqueado ahí. Es hermoso. Hemos estado yendo a ver al, al volcán Tumburagua y ahora nos topamos con esto. Es hermoso. Miren. No es un avión. No es nada. Qué belleza. Se va alejando poquito a poquito. Bueno, eso es todo, creo que. Vamos a ver al volcán Tumburagua a ver qué pasa. Pero miren, es como una, como una araña de, de sal, algo así. Vemos otro de estos objetos. Son extraños, tienen una luz central y unas luces laterales y son intermitentes de esas luces. que se me pierde, no tengo pulso ay carajo están flotando in the end, the witness and his friends reached the panoramic spot in front of the volcano Tungarahua their original destination before the sighting Después de esta alegría tan bonita que hemos tenido y esta sorpresa del OVNI, estamos ya en el sitio para ver el, el volcán. It wasn't the first time that this type of UFO had been sighted and filmed. In the 1990s, Victor Chiluiza sighted and filmed this flying object in Ecuador. It looks very similar to the one we've just seen. When I realized that they actually didn't seem to be airplanes or balloons, I felt a thrill, and I understood that it really wasn't what I had expected. It was a UFO. It must have been 200, 180 meters from here. It was closer, and so it looked larger, and, I don't know, Maybe the video camera helped me to put it into focus enough to see the image clearly, and I believe it was thanks to the video camera. And one thing that really caught my attention was that it made no noise. I might have thought it was an airplane, a, a helicopter, but I couldn't hear any noise. And that was what made me get my video camera and start filming. But when I saw it through the video camera, when I saw it from close up, I didn't see the typical saucer shape but rather the shape of a sort of star, a very particular shape that I had never seen before. I got the impression that it was something out of the ordinary, something that I would never have imagined seeing. It really struck me, the fact that I saw something that's so rarely sighted. It seems natural to me, I mean, in such an immense universe, the third planet can't possibly be the only inhabited one. I've always believed it, and I have to be honest, I've always wanted to see a flying object. And when at last I was able to see one, it was a dream come true. Another similar craft was subsequently filmed in Mexico. The first was sighted and filmed in Tikul, Yucatan on the 7th of August 2004. I need 
bonito, mira eso. Sí, pues que tú quedas firmando y yo sigo por allá por detrás de los árboles también. Sí, no, 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 no. Another similar flying object was filmed in Tikul, Mexico on the 12th of December 2004. Another sighting confirms the link between unidentified flying objects and volcanic areas. This time, it was filmed by a truly exceptional witness. The event took place near Ecuador's capital, Quito. Here, the wind can reach up to 140 kilometers per hour. A family is on an outing in the countryside when something attracts their attention. An unusual object hovering in the air despite the strong wind. Filming the event is Ecuador's chief of police. We are in the cima of Pichincha hemos encontrado algún objeto que está volando aquí entre las nubes no sabríamos decir qué es podría ser un ovni y vamos a filmarle para mandarle a, a Jaime Rodríguez vamos a congelarle la imagen un momentito ahí ¿qué creen que sea? un globo That same night, the staff of Quito's Equivisa television channel received several calls notifying them of the presence of a mysterious, brightly shining craft right above the crater. The station sent a team straight away to film what was happening. The following is their report, which was later broadcast. Now we'll go back to the news we gave you at the beginning of the program due to the large number of calls we've received. The peace was disturbed at Quito tonight by a phenomenon that has not yet been explained. Here we see the images recorded earlier. A bright, blinking yellow and red colored light appeared and disappeared in the sky south of the capital. The phenomenon was seen from various neighborhoods in Quito, and residents, primarily in the southern area, have been calling our staff continually to tell us that they saw it. Aquavisa's video cameras recorded the images you're seeing now. By analyzing the images, we can clearly see that the light emanating from the UFO even shines through the clouds. The mysterious object's varying luminosity and its ability to hover prove that it couldn't be a headlight on an aeroplane or any other conventional craft. Quito was once more the setting for another incredible sighting. It's another important declassified case which joins the already extensive CEIFO archives. On September the 5th, 2007, Dr. Antonio Osorio witnessed a very special phenomenon. A flotilla. I was sitting down, having lunch and chatting with Patrizia about the patients, as we always do, Patricia came back in, looked out of the window and said, Doctor, look, what could that be? I went to the window and I also saw some, they looked like aeroplanes or balloons. They seemed to me to be more like aerostats, but I was amazed to see so many of them. I ran out, called my wife and told her to come and see. It was a really strange thing. And I asked her where my video camera was. I ran to get it and we went out onto the terrace to watch the scene. 
we can see a classic flotilla composed of about 57 white spheres in the sky. The video camera has recorded a sound similar to the rattling of a train in their presence. CEIFO researchers checked whether the Military Aviation Command or the Civil Aviation Office had authorized the release of aerostats or other similar objects. But their answer was negative. I thought that there were no fewer than 50 of them. At first sight, they were moving forward in a uniform way. But once I filmed them, it appeared that they were brightly shining objects and apparently they moved very quickly. I saw two objects fly by, flat and oval shaped. Curiosity drove me to go to the window and I said, Doctor, come look at this. What is it? And we stood in front of the window and when we saw what it was, we noted that there were about 50 of them, so many of them. Dr. Antonio Osorio had always been skeptical about the UFO phenomenon. He would never have imagined that one day he'd be involved in such an event. No, I didn't believe them because they've always said there are people who know how to edit videos in such a way as to make us believe they're real, but they aren't. But now I believe it. I have faith in it. Nowadays, we're accustomed to seeing security cameras positioned at various points in our cities. They're part of the scenery and nobody notices them anymore. In Ecuador, they call them eagle eyes. We know the cameras are there to watch out for accidents or criminal acts, but in Cuenca, Ecuador, they recorded a rather unusual scene. In Cuenca, in Cuenca, a city in the mountains south of Ecuador, there are surveillance cameras in the streets. One of these filmed some children pointing to the sky from the terrace of their house. The person operating the surveillance camera zoomed in on the children and moved it upwards to see what they were pointing to in space. By doing so, it located and filmed a UFO moving towards the Cajas Lagoons. The model of video camera with which these extraordinary images were recorded is very sophisticated and expensive. While the UFO was being filmed, a second object appeared at the same point, and they both went toward Cajas. Here, the same thing that happened in other cases repeated itself. The UFO stopped, hovering. When the children pointed to it, and someone there began to film it, the object started to move. I think that there was some form of intelligence inside it. By analyzing the images, we can note how the first object begins to move the moment the video camera pans over it. This becomes even clearer when the second unidentified flying object arrives to accompany the first before they fly away. This video is part of the UFO material that was declassified thanks to President Rafael Correa's order. Therefore, the authenticity of these videos has been confirmed by the presidency of the Republic of Ecuador. The great results that Rodriguez has achieved in Ecuador thus far are unequaled in any other South American country. But even in other nations like Brazil, the ufological community is very active and it sets itself similar goals. Adamar José Giveed is the best-known Brazilian investigator following the UFO phenomenon. In Brazil, the best-known cases in Brazil, even on an international level, are fairly specific, distinct cases. For example, UFOs in the Amazon area are a matter of frequent discussion, and Brazilian ufologists have been examining the cases for some time. In fact, a constant alien presence in the wild and nearly unexplored Amazon area is something of a legend. 
An ancient memory of contact with beings from the stars has been passed down in the myths and traditions of many cultures that some consider primitive. The Kayapo tribe is among these witnesses. We have indigenous nations, and this is an incredible thing. Entire indigenous populations who base their rituals and folk celebrations on the supposition that they are of extraplanetary origins. For example, the indigenous people of Upper Zingu believe that they descend from a mythical being called Bep Kororoti, who came to Earth decades, centuries ago, according to the cultural traditions of that people, leaving an extraterrestrial legacy. They believe that they belong to a civilization from beyond Earth, and that one day they will be brought back to their homeland. In remembrance of their ancient descent from the stars, the Kayapo celebrate a rite in which one of them personifies the mythical Beb Kororoti, the being from space who taught them how to farm and many other things. The costume used in the ceremony is made of woven vegetable fibers, and its shape suggests more modern clothing. The headdress clearly simulates a helmet, and the rest resembles a pressurized suit. Is this just an ancient myth, or could it be something else? However you choose to view it, it's an intriguing story for our times. One of the most important ufological cases that took place in the Amazon area directly involved the Brazilian military. The operation known as Plato took place in 1977 in the state of Pará, within the Amazon area, and it achieved extraordinary results. The military became involved after a remarkable number of sightings and contacts began to alarm the population and the local authorities. We reached such a serious level that the local authorities informed the Paris state government, which in turn requested that the Brazilian Air Force intervene. So an investigation was ordered. As a consequence, Operation Plato was launched in September and ended in December 1977. It produced about 2,000 pages of documents, of which we have over 200 filed in folders. It also produced 500 photographs of flying saucers, including some taken from close range. We have about two dozen of those. Operation Plato also produced at least 16 hours of footage showing flying saucers over the Amazon area rivers. Brazilian ufologists, and in particular UFO magazine, have none of this material. Operation Plato, which means saucer, as in flying saucer, was closed down by the Brazilian military command in December 1977. The reason for this was puzzling to say the least. It was closed because something happened, the very thing that the military was looking for, contact with extraterrestrial beings. That was one of their objectives, to attempt to establish contact with the forms of intelligence behind the phenomenon. They didn't think it could happen. When it happened, to put it simply, when there was direct contact between an official of the Brazilian Air Force and the extraterrestrial beings, which happened around mid-December 1977, the Brazilian Air Force simply understood that it might lose control of the situation and, as a consequence, it closed down Operation Plato for good. Gevaed first received confirmation of these extraordinary events from Colonel Uranga Holanda, the mission's commander. Colonel Holanda mysteriously took his own life some time later. The incredible results achieved by this military operation pushed the ufologists to attempt to persuade the government to release the documentation it had produced. 
Today, our mission in Brazil aims to get that material finally declassified. We've already had confirmation from various military sources. At the moment, it mainly comes from Brigadier José Carlos Pereira, former commander of the Brazilian Aerospace Defense Command. Commander Pereira not only confirmed the truth behind this operation and the classified documents, but also gave an assessment of it from a strategic and military perspective. The reports are kept in the archive and classified as secret. Now, if I were to say, during Operation Plato, there was this or that contact, I'd be violating the secrecy imposed by law on my country. I can't do it. I can't reveal it. Otherwise, I'd be committing a crime. But I can say, please change the law. Please make a new law. The UFO matter does not constitute a threat of war to any country. It doesn't threaten anyone's safety and doesn't cause panic amongst the population. It doesn't even threaten people's privacy. I see no reason why it can't be completely opened and divulged. Pereira's analysis even made news on the international ufological scene. There is an extensive amount of evidence and witness accounts, not just in Brazil, but throughout the world. This evidence is quite valid and carries great weight. Commander Pereira's words are supported by the never-ending stream of cases, which continues to appear with increasing frequency. In the rest of South America, the videos and photographs that have been produced are certainly not as numerous as in Mexico, but the material in existence provides researchers and scientists with increasingly extraordinary material for their investigations. Peru has been the stage for remarkable UFO appearances since the 1990s. A very intense wave of sightings took place in the capital, Lima, in 1999. The videos recorded at the time caught the attention of both the media and the Peruvian public. A number of very bright, unidentified objects flying at low altitudes generated unease in Lima's population. People didn't know how to explain what was happening and the authorities were unable to provide any clarification regarding the nature of the unknown craft. On the 20th of May 2007, a flotilla appeared in the skies over Lima, rekindling interest in the media and the Peruvian public. This is the news report broadcast on the channel ATV Noticias. It was about noon when people on the street saw this spectacular phenomenon. Este extraño y sorprendente espectáculo registrado en Lima hace dos días fue captado por un equipo de...
TV Noticias. Por más de 30 minutos se observó una diversidad de puntos blancos que iban formando figuras en el cielo. Estos avistamientos bien podrían ser estudiados por una oficina de sistema aeroespacial, como existen países como Chile, Brasil, Argentina y México. The event was also filmed from another point in the city. By analyzing the frames, we can clearly see the classic white spheres making up the flotilla. It doesn't happen often that people and traffic stop to witness a spectacular show of unidentified flying objects. The city of Trenta y Tres in Uruguay was at the center of one of these rare cases. The episode took place when Giorgio Bon Giovanni was visiting from Italy. He traveled there for a series of conferences regarding the presence of UFOs. In the video, we can clearly see numerous flying objects hovering in the clear sky. They're flying at a relatively low altitude and are easily seen by the people on the street. The object's movement clearly shows their ability to move autonomously during flight. Yet another spectacular example of this unknown form of aviation. Tarbaca is near San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica. Just before four o'clock in the afternoon, Marvin Badia, a young carpenter, was working when he heard a strange buzzing that distracted him from his work. To his intense amazement, the young man saw that the source of the noise was about a hundred meters away from him. I was shaping this table here outside. It was very cloudy. I looked up and saw some sort of object. It was very bright. I looked at it carefully and took out my mobile phone. I saw that it was giving me time to film it, so I started to record. I called my colleague, who was working with a drill, but he didn't hear me. I called him again. I turned towards him, moving the phone, and when I turned back, the object had already gone. The film that Marvin recorded shows a classic flying saucer hovering just a few meters from the ground. His colleague, William Rivera, didn't hear Marvin shouting over the noise of the drill he was using. Thus, he missed the extraordinary spectacle. William! 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 William Rivera assures us that Marvin was quite shaken. No, he wouldn't calm down. He was still very, very worked up. You see, I believe that this was a UFO. I have no doubt it wasn't man-made. And why was it here? We don't know. The movements that the craft makes and its appearance prove that it could not have been a conventional earthly vehicle. According to Marvin's description, the object was about as large as the wheel of a large tractor. It wouldn't have been large enough to hold a normal-sized person. Oscar Sierra, the ufologist from Costa Rica, explains his theory to the Teletica journalists. It's not necessarily a driven object. It could be some sort of probe, like those that human beings sent to Titan not long ago, which were small, about two meters. Therefore, they aren't necessarily piloted objects. Rather, they could be some kind of surveying probe. It's hard to say whether this is the correct explanation, but it's clear that the video recorded by Marvin Badia is among the best documents that the investigators have today.
Continual sightings in South America and in the rest of the world. The creation of an official UFO investigation committee in Ecuador. The declassification of secret files in other nations such as France and England. The statements made by the Vatican. A new perception of the phenomenon in ever wider areas of civilian society. They're all signs that something is changing. Various ancient prophecies predict that change is coming to humanity. For Jaime Rodriguez, this hope is a certainty. Absolutely. We're at the beginning of a new era. In fact, we've got a lot of responsibility. And I'm a person who truly believes, that is, I have a feeling that the predictions that the Maya made for 2012 are of great importance. And I believe that people's conscience is going to change. Might this be true? Certainly, we can hope that humanity might soon be able to unlock the mystery of what seems to be an increasingly frequent presence.